Hello everyone, it's me, it's me, it's DreadVC, and we are going to try something a little bit different today. I have not been good at drafting since, oh, Rav, not Ravnica, but um, uh, Zendikar Worldwake. Not even Rise of the Eldrazi, that one I was horrible in. But, we have a free draft, so we're going to take it. And, from what I've been reading, blue, green... And blue white are great. Uh, red black also good, but I'm less inclined to take those because I'm less f not familiar with aggro. Because I mean, I can I can play it. Uh, I'm I'm just less interested in it. I like this is a format where the games generally tend to go a little bit longer from what I've seen, and the black red just doesn't have the late game stuff that other ones do. But I mean, it's not it's not that it's weak. In fact, I'll I fully anticipate losing to one black red deck at least but i will more than likely be keeping my eyes out for azorius or simic i'm most familiar with them um orzhov orzhov has some great creatures with some great payoffs when they die so not ruling it out completely so anywho enough speculation what we need to do is get started immediately open a stomping ground which I've got enough of to not really worry about. I see this, and I immediately want to slam it, because it's amazing. Also very good. Okay, what else do we have here? The Fairy Duelist is decent. Not amazing. No removal spells that I can see other than... Uh, tapping a creature and drawing a card, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be my pick here. This is okay with Spectacle, but I'm not super sold on it. It's way too early to pick something like that. And this guy is very good. Very good, but I think I'm going to pick the 3-3 Flyer that has two upsides. Wow, I, I completely forgot he has first strike. So we're going to start with him. Ooh. So we've got a flyer with afterlife, which I like. Multicolored creatures get plus one, plus one. That buffs him. Might be a bit early to take that. I'm yeah, leaning toward this. Uh, Grasping Thrall, also very good. A 3-3 three, three flyer once again. A 3-2 flyer with scry. Or four. Goodness. I'm not trying to force anything. I'm actually legitimately reading all these cards and trying to figure out which is the best one. Act of Treason, eh. It's not really that good. Uh, this is good in the Menace Heavy deck. I genuinely think that this card is actually better than it looks because it does cost four. Do we go with the more offensive flyer or the defensive flyer? Or the Thrull? So these are both four, or they're actually they're all four. I'm sorry, this one's five. Hmm. This actually makes their flyers a little bit weaker, so it's a little harder for them to kill it, essentially making it a 3-3 three, three if I have them both in play, and that makes this one a 2-4 flying afterlife. I think, I think I want to take the griffin for more power in the air. That could be a mistake, but like I said, I'm not great at drafting. This guy's decent, but I kind of like the flyers better. He's good too. I didn't even see him. But yeah, let's take that. Resolute Watchdog, I really like. He protects things. This guy, right here, I think this is my go to. He becomes a 4 5 flyer, and everything else on it with plus 1 plus 1 counters gets flying. Although Slime Bind is also a effective removal. Let's see. Meh. I think I'm going to go with the Spy. I actually think he might be the best pick. This is so difficult to pick this early on. If it wheels, you know, it'll show that green-blue is open, but yeah. Uh, this could be played in blue-white, but he's really expensive, and he's a common, so if we ever need one, we can probably get one. This guy is pretty good. 
I kind of want to stick with the whole flying thing though. It costs a bit to get it done. But yeah, let's start. Let's just let's just push that. See what we can do. Like I said, I'm not good at this, but we'll see. I really like Sentinel's Mark. Uh, I think that it has a lot of capability, even though if they destroy that creature, it'll be a two for one. Thinking about what we have already, if you throw it on the Senate Griffin, it becomes a 4-4 four, four flyer with, uh, with Vigilance. So, I mean, seems pretty good. This is not bad in itself either. I kind of want to push creatures more so than anything. This is okay later. Eh. I think I'll have time to pick up more of them. Do I pick up the cheaper creature now? Or do I pick up the buff? I think the real question is, do I pick an uncommon over a common at this stage? This guy. I also really like this guy. He's a common and he hits so hard. A 7-7 seven, seven trample for 7 or a 6-6 six, six haste trample for 7. That's such a beater. Actually, this might be the best card if we were to go that route. That seems really good. I'm not trying to force Bant. That's really difficult to do. We're not solid on any colors yet. We could always drop white. I think we're probably going to be blue. I think I'm going to take the uh, Aeromunculus. Or I'm, uh, well, yeah, let's do it. Let's take the Aeromunculus. And s no, you know what? Heck with it. I'm going to try and stick with blue-white for now. I think it might actually still be a better card. The ability to give it life link and gain some, just gain a little bit of life, plus it uh, leaves the creature back as a blocker. I think this is going to be a good pick. We still need to prioritize creatures. Okay. Skittering Eel is just great. I mean, it's just, it's just really good. Not great. Not super sold on this guy. I mean, he's okay. If he had Flash, he'd be amazing. I mean, 3-2 for 3 is not terrible, but he does trade down, I think. God, this Mystic is never going to get picked, I bet. There's a Battlefield Scry 1. I think I'm going to go with... God, I've already got... Two four drops though. So this is where I need to start worrying about what my curve is. I think I'm gonna take. Ugh. He's so expensive. Well, I think the best card that's available right now is actually the hybrid, but. I still think I want to take the eel. I've got to worry about my um my curve. Although he does adapt, so one one flyers, which means he can possibly fly later on. Humungulus two five hexproof isn't fantastic. So this makes me want to start pushing into green because green is apparently very open, and I don't have to be sold, or I can splash white if necessary. I like this guy a lot, and he can just be a complete game ender. This is alright, but I'm not in the realm for combat tricks yet. I'm going to take the Wizrog as just the best card. I think we could just run Mono Frilled Mystics if we really wanted to. I think we're going to take the Slime Bind as a sort of pseudo removal, especially since if the creatures that we give this to do not have flying, it's basically pacifism. Yeah, we'll take that for now. Senate Courier versus, I mean, the Simic Gilgate and Locket. I think this is trying to tell us that Simic might be open, but it's hard to know. We're seeing a lot of, a lot of stuff here. Don't want Quench. Really don't want Caracal. Don't really care for that either. Root Snare is just not playable. I'll take a Quench, but I hope I don't play it. Okay, I really like this guy. I think that's going to be the best pick. Stony Strength is okay. But this guy is super good. Kind of regret not taking a couple of other cards now. Let's see, a 4 2 that can be a flyer for 3, but you got oh, to keep paying for it. Hmm. 
Well, I guess we could take a Gator as a late game card. Could it replace this guy? Or do we still want to splash white? I think we still want to splash if possible. I'll take the Gator. I hope I don't play him, though. I'm actually going to move him to sideboard for now. And possibly the Sentinel's Mark, but we'll see what happens. Hmm. I like that it's instant speed. I'd say green and blue are clearly open at this point. He's so expensive. I have a feeling we'll be able to pick him up. But do I really want a Regenesis? I do have seven creatures already. And it's better than the others, I feel. I already have one of those. I still think we just take the bird. No, you know what? This is an uncommon. We're going to take that based on that. We'll probably have more chances at the birds. Uh, none of these are any good. I'll just take the guild gate because it's pretty. Humongulus versus open the gate. Search your library for... Uh, if we have a gate and we need it, we could just take that as a sideboard card. Root snare. Completely unplayable. And we open a Simic Ascendancy. Wow. Wow. I really think that that might go well with what we're trying to do here. Especially if we can splash for this guy. Or, sorry, we're not going to be splashing. If we're playing this fella. Gives all my other creatures flying. Hmm. Just looking at the others. Decent card. Two damage to any target. It's actually a really good card, but I don't. I'm, I'm not going to go red. What are we hoping to bring back around? Possibly the Rendhorn. I'd take an Azorius Guildgate on my like seventh pick, something like that. We're gonna take the Ascendancy. It feels really good in this deck. Still going for blue and green creatures. Okay, that's a good common. Rare was taken from this pack. A 3-3 three, three for 4 isn't terrible. A 2-2 two, two haste for 4 with an upside is okay. Well, let's look at it this way. We need 3s pretty bad. But we also need creatures more so than we need just 3s. So... I'm not, I don't hate this card as a tempo play. I think we still want to just take the hybrid here. It's got to be better than just this, right? Yeah, we'll take the hybrid. He gets better later. Oh my goodness, information campaign, what do you know? High alert is probably my one of my favorite cards in the set, but not going to be playing that. Combine Guild Mage is very good. Can move one one creatures from or one one counters from creatures that don't have it to creatures that do, and that gives them flying effectively. Uh, I think we're gonna take the guild mage. Oh, actually, nope, that's a common. I actually want to take the guild mage as a two drop, and then ooh, I don't know. I think we're gonna take the aeromunculus. I don't think the guild get the guild mage is gonna see, but that is a common. Bear with me just a second. I gotta look something up right quick because I really think. I had the uh, set reviews up earlier and I was looking at which ones had the. There we are. So the Simic one. I know Aeromunculus is way up there. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the Guild Mage, even though the Aeromunculus is good. 
we'll have more chances at those. I love Growth Spiral, but not in this format. Do I go with another one of these as more ramp and fixing? I kind of like that idea. It's that versus, let's see, a Griffin, which is good, but it costs four. This guy, which makes a splash more into white. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Draw a card. I think I'm going to still prioritize creatures heavy. Especially with all the adapt that we have. Yeah, we're going to go with that guy. Go down the adapt range. Another guild mage is good. I mean, this is a 2-2. This is a 2-2 that adapts later. Common, we'll have more chances at those. I think I'm going to take the guild mage again. Probably not take another one. And now that we're getting these um, engineers, I think taking a higher cost might be okay. Let's put the guild gate over here. Versus another griffin. Let's go lower. I don't think I want to take the big guy yet. Coral Commando is a hard no. Ugh, get another griffin. I think I want to take the three drop here and just use it as a 1-4. Who cares about the Vigilance? Might not play two of them. My gate enters the battlefield. I um, think we can take the guild gate here. Again, I'll have plenty of time to pick up a 7-drop if I really want to, but I don't think that's the route we're going to go. I'm going to take the gate and definitely play it. This guy is just getting no love. Let's see. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Scry one. No, no. None of this other stuff is really all that good. Might take an arrestor's admonition. Probably pick up a Gilgate with no problem later. And if not, it's no huge deal. I don't have to play the Azorius Skyguard. It's just really good. Uh, what are we looking like on creatures? Two. Or sorry. One, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine. 11, 12, 13 creatures so far. Yeah, we'll take that for now. Yes, this is where we want to be. If we can only get like six or seven more of these, this is the deck. Uh, beginning to regret taking that now. Do we take another eel? It's, it's got to be better than these other things, right? Destroy target, land, scry two. That's just a useless card. Take an eel. I like to prioritize creatures right now. High alert is a no. Senate courier, eh. I guess we're going to take another courier. Really hope to not play all of these. Could take a growth spiral. Destroy a target creature with flying seems like an okay sideboard card. Target permanent cards. So I guess slime binds, and if they they kill our ascendancy, it might. It's probably silly that I'm spending this much time, um, trying to figure out what to pick when. Eh, I'll just take the growth spiral. Maybe not play it. Take another slime bind. That's pretty late. I guess it's not as good. To, or they don't. They don't think it's that good. Three three in reach. Good in the sideboard, I suppose. Even I don't, or do we even use a sideboard in this? Incubation Druid is very good. Galloping Lizarog also very good. What else we got here? Bunch of commons. He's quite decent. A lot of twos, threes, and fours. Which I can deal with. He's a five drop and very strong. I think I'm gonna take the druid because I like the cheaper guy here. Plus he's a rare and there's more chance we'll see this guy later on. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's gonna be my pick right here. Zagana is a four four that replaces herself and then becomes Jai freaking enormous. Uh, Terramander, I like him a lot, but I don't think we could possibly pick it over Zagana. It's just not going to happen. 
Shark to Crab, also quite good. Especially if we combine Shark to Crab with our Ascendancy. Oh, yeah. We're getting in there now. I think Blue-Green might have been the way to go. I'm going to take the Aeromunculus over the Azorius Skyguard. I'm probably not going to play the one we have and just stick to Blue-Green. Unless we can wheel a Guildgate and then I'll throw it in there. Aeromunculus is a good choice because it costs three. I'm not going to play another one of those if I can avoid it. Four, two with Flan. I don't care. Don't think I want to run counter spells that much. I'll just take another growth spiral. Eh. I mean, we could give it permanent flying. It does trade up. We'll take it. Hopefully not play it. Whoops. Get out of here. <sighs> okay, it's a 5-5 flyer, which seems really good, but it costs 7, and that's just a lot, I think. Essence Capture is fine, but I still think the hybrid here is probably better. I don't really want to go the Counterspell route in this deck. We're going to take the hybrid. Boar. Meh. Open the gates. Did I ever pick up that guild gate? No. I need to pick one up, I guess, before that's going to be really good. Prevent all combat damage. That's a no. Can't be blocked by tokens. Not going to run red. Fairy Duelist is playable. I think we'll take this one. 4-4 four, four, right. You know what? I think I can... T Ooh, actually, you know what? Right here. I really like this card. And I think it's got to be better than that with our... Like, if we put it on our Druid, it just... It cranks us up in mana and we just start really putting stuff out. I'm going to take the Biomancy. And the Lizrog Wield. We're going to take that over the Guild Gate, I'd say. Do we Wait, do we want to... That's a second one. Okay. I thought maybe we had a third... What's our curve looking like now? Yeah, we can afford that. Let's do that. Over the guild gate and the locket. This rock it is. Scuttle gator, no. No. I mean, none of these are good, so. I don't know if I have a gruel guild gate at all, but I still think I'm just gonna grab this guy. Never know. Okay, sure. Stony Strength. There we go. Guildgate. Alright. We'll keep the Guildgate. We can actually play the Skyguard. Take a Growth Spiral, not play it. Take another Guildgate and maybe play it. Root Snare. That's a no. Alright. Hooray! We had extras. Alrighty. So we've got 47 cards main deck. Good God. Okay, we gotta cut some stuff. So, this is running a 17 lands, which I'm fine with. I'm going to cut Quench, because I'm not going that route. I like the Incubation Druid for the ramp. And the two, let's see, do we even keep the Growth Spiral? I think the best way to use a growth spiral is if you do keep your counter spells in the deck that way if they don't play anything worth countering you growth spiral and cycle so I think that's a cut ascendancy I do want to play I think it's too good in this deck maybe keep one of those definitely cutting at least one of the senate couriers keep the aeromunculus gyre engineer Again, what's our curve looking like? Lots and lots of two drops. I mean a ton. Guess we cut this. Seems like it's too slow and we've got a bunch of stuff anyway. Do we need two galloping Lizrogs? I 
Maybe we cut the griffin? I was really psyched on having him. Or do we cut the skitter eel? Because he's just a little bit less good. Although he is easier to cast and technically a little bit stronger. We'll cut one griffin, I think. I really like this guy a lot in this deck. Because we do not have to pay six mana to get that ability. We have a lot of ways to get it. I think I do want to run two of those guys. Yeah, see, we've got Biomancy, all that other fun stuff to do. I think we can actually get away with 16 lands, so we got to make one more cut. And I think it might be a Galloping Lizrog. I don't think we really need to run two of them. I think they get less good in higher numbers. We're going to cut the planes. Yes. And we are going to cut... I would like I wouldn't mind having two white sources to increase our chances of the sky guard and we'll cut an island for the guild gate. Oh, cap is on. What you know. All right. Oh, great. We have two guild gates here. All right. So, since I really like the art on Aeromunculus, we're going to put that up there. Although we did draft Sagana. She'd be cool, but she looks she's just a merfolk, so not that cool. Okay, so Simic beats draft. We have no one drops, but not surprising. This is not a terribly fast format. 13, 14, 15, 16 lands with a few ramp spells. I think that's going to be fine. Let's do it. All right, resign. No. <laughs> I'd imagine this isn't going to be a super long wait. This has got to be pretty popular right now, right? We're playing some filthy casual over here. Good hand. Got a turn three. Two turn threes. Probably start with the Aeromunculus. Definitely a keeper. Love Skittering Eel, too. He's going to be great in this. Mold a six, scribe the bottom, playing black. Okay. Got a turn two. Look at there. Combo off. Excellent spirit. Ugh. Three two menace death touch, huh? Okay. Well. I'm not going to be using this ability, I don't believe, so if he wants to trade, we'll let him. Didn't think he did. Whoops. Probably should have played the Aeromunculus first. That's okay. No big deal. Shark the Crab. What is this? Four to adapt one so we could do it next turn and tap him. Actually, I actually think I'm better. I'm happier doing that. That way we can adapt him, swing in better. And then the next turn plays the Ghana, tapping his guy down. Maybe more, who knows. Plus this guy is going to give him flying. Boom. Doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. God, that's going to be really good. Actually, with the Guild Mage, we can just move a counter to it at some point. I'm going to play her next turn. Play her, draw an extra card. That's got to be better than just playing an Aeromunculus. Does our opponent have anything? We curved out hard right now. Like, that was... Drawing this guy was just great. I don't think Shark to Crab's gonna make it. 
Uh, he's looking at him. Why are you looking at him? What's this guy even have? Sword. Instant of sor Oh, okay. So his instant of sorcery, sorcery spells have death touch. So if he had a burn spell, it would kill him. It would kill anything. Okay, there you go. Okay, that's not a... I mean, that's it sucks, but it's not the worst loss. Uh, now we're going to actually not play Zagana yet. We're going to play... If we play that, adapt it, and then if we draw a land, that's even better, but... Uh, we'll play this guy, because he gets stronger. He becomes a 5-5. Five five. Playing him before attackers, because I'm dumb. Okay. That seems fine. Yeah. Let's make this guy into a 5-5 five five and attack here. You gotta attack, you gotta block him. Just like a die. And then... Aeromunculus. Guildgate, go. If you don't have a Kaya's Wrath, that's GG, buddy. Alright. So game one went perfectly. Like, I couldn't ask for a better game one. Um... Didn't really see much out of his deck. I have a couple of uh, destroy. Don't we have a destroy a um, flyer card, or did we end up not taking it? I mean, we didn't take it. Ah, here we go. We can give a creature three three and reach, but I'm just not certain that I need that. I have a lot of flyers. Besides, what would I cut for it really? Nothing. We're just going to run it back as is. Changes are not done until submission. Okay, yeah. We only saw two creatures in his entire deck. One was a flyer. I can only... Well, we saw three cards, but, you know. Okay. Got a pretty decent hand, I'd say. Gonna start with the guild mage. Ugh. He mulliganed again and scryed the bottom. He's got a turn one. Aw, oh, kitty. That's adorable. Shark doe crab! Okay, a lot of death touch on his end. Touch and afterlife. Okay. And he has to pay to give that death touch. Yeah, believe it or not, no blocks. It's not ready to trade off for something with afterlife yet, especially afterlife. Or especially on um, that guy. Okay. So he's drafting Death Touch deck. We will have to start trading eventually. I think we're going to um, give this guy minus four, minus zero. That just... That can't be right, can it? Play the Courier. He's not going to block with his 3-2. I'm going to take 5 this turn. So next turn I think I'm going to play the... Okay, this guy, once he starts playing creatures, it's it's not, not as fun to play against him. Uh, no blocks. Taking a bunch here. I think the best bet would be slime bind. Skittering eel is okay too. We need to kill these creatures, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this one. I don't think the death touch is gonna matter with his incense or sorceries because they've got to deal damage to kill things, don't they? Any yeah, okay, they gotta actually deal damage, so that's fine. Um, 
land hybrid go yeah we're gonna want the hybrid let's get into one now you know what let's not no reason to attack with the one four and I'm actually going to start blocking. I don't think this is going to be doing as much. And we're going to keep taking damage every turn if we don't start killing things. And I'm actually fine trading the hybrid for his 1-2. Let me guess, you got death touch too? Ass. Okay. Is that what you really want to do there? I mean... Yeah, we'll block here. Block here. Okay, you have your 1-1 one, one flyer now. Incubation Druid. Hmm. Cost 5 to adapt. He can do it to himself next turn. I think I'm, gonna f I'm fine going on the defensive for now. Because I want to get these Death Touchers off the board. Because this guy is going to be ginormous. Or no, no, I'm sorry. This isn't the guy who doubles the... Yeah, we'll, we'll go wide for now. With him. Get the Ascendancy moving. No attacks. He's not going to block with the 1-1. One, one. He'll just attack back for 2. If he attacks with the Viscopa Vampire, we will just block it with the 1-4. It's only got lifelink. Okay. That's going to be a prob, Bob. Okay. 8-6, huh? Yeah. That's going to be a bitch. I don't think we're at the chumping point yet. He's gaining a piss load of life off of that though, that's for damn sure. Pay three mana, get three mana back. I can play the crab still. Or I can play the eel. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. Yeah, I'm gonna play this guy. I really don't want to trade four for one. Got to find a way to deal with that dude. Oh, wait, I know how to deal with him. I'm just going to chump him this turn. And No, I'm actually not going to chump him at all because that creature died. And, uh... Well, I mean, I'm going to chump him, but I'm actually not going to do what I wanted to at all because that creature died. <laughs> I was going to keep him tapped. Okay. So he's a 5-8 menace death touch. He has to be blocked by two creatures. Yeah. I don't foresee this going well for us. That's filthy. That card's broken. Jesus H. Christ. Alright. Scoop that on up. So. Gotta figure out a way to get rid of Angelic Exaltation. God damn. I don't think I have a way to do that, do I? Huh. Gross. Might actually be worth dropping this guy out. And putting in a gift of strength to kill something. I actually think that might be better because his creatures get so strong so fast. I don't know.
Actually, I think I would like a quench better than a gift of strength. If we can just counter that one spell, I think our creatures can actually fight his. That was horrible. We just got the bejesus beaten out of us. Yeah, we'll play first. Seems okay. Slow. God, he went down to five. He went down to four. Seriously, whatever you have in hand, if there's a land, it's got to be better than going to three, right? That sucks, though. I hate that for him, but I mean... It's only going to make it more embarrassing if we lose, right? <laughs> uh, we'll play this guy. Next turn, we can play... If we draw a four drop, we can play that. Or he's going to kill it one way or another. No attacks. Death touch indestructible. This dude just went mono death touch, man. Okay. I'm totally fine with him paying for life to kill that. Or five life, whatever it was. This guy's going to be huge next turn. He's going to have to play another creature. And if he attacks, we'll be cracking back for larger numbers. Okay. No blocks. Okay, if he attacks with both creatures, we take five. I think he's going to probably leave back blockers, which I'm probably fine with. Okay, attacking for three. So now, we're probably going to level up. Notice I called it leveling up. Actually, we're just going to play this guy. No, wait, level up this guy? And then next turn... Actually, can I do both? I already played a land, I'm sorry. So I level him up. I've got three... I don't quite have the mana to do it. Damn. We're going to do that anyway. And I'm going to attack for six. Because I still think this guy coming in is like a 6-6. Six, six, is going to be just fine. If he wants to sack his uh, one of his dudes, make him indestructible, and give him death touch, he can't do it forever. Okay. You got it, man. Did you draw your enchantment that's just going to wreck our couch? <laughs> Probably not. Woo! Got us good. Hot damn, he flashed that in. I didn't even see it coming. Shark do crab. There's our play. Play him. Adapt. Don't untap. Mm. 
the next turn we can Lizrog taking those off and then adapt him, I think we'll have the mana for it. Oh god damn it. You always gonna have death touch all the things? That's fine. We'll get around it. Take one. Take three. Spy. Well, there's this. Just get in over top right now. We'll do that. Why did it... Oh my god. Stupid fucking... I did not want to tap him. I wanted to win this turn. We'll just play the Lizrog then. And take all the 1-1 one -one counters. Uh, no, we'll take a couple off of him. And leave his. That'll still put 4 on him. He'll be a 7-7. Seven -seven. Submit, and he's a 7-7 seven -seven flyer. Bummer, dude. All right. So we took game one. Got some pretty good synergy going on in this deck, I tell you. I'm digging the Simic a lot. All right, two packs. And if we win again, we get 800 gems mine got. Play another. I'm actually probably going to break this up into a couple of videos because it is after 1 a.m. And for some reason, I am just damn tired. Like, super beat. I'd love to play first, thank you. And we will not be keeping that one lander. Oh, God. Um... Yeah, whatever. We've got a lot of ways to survive turns. No, we're not playing a damn mono blue deck. Black Denon? Okay, we've got a Diablo player over here, it looks like. I think I'm going to have to do this main phase at some point. Play the eel, that's fine. We are still seriously sitting on mono blue right now. This is ridiculous. <laughs> okay. My god, really? Okay. He might kill it. Um, yeah, no blocks. I'm not falling for your combat trick bullshittery. You can do it next turn if you want to, but it's going to be harder for you to do. Especially since this has flash. <laughs> okay, so he's going to think we're Azorius after this. Um... Three to adapt. I can't do that and the trick at the same time. So what I'm going to do... I'm just going to return this to his hand and draw. And hopefully draw a forest and play the guild mage attack for three. Or play the hybrid. Maybe the hybrid. Damn you. Okay, attack for three. Looks like he's got a kill spell. Go. Cool. So now we play. I think the spy. If we draw a land, he becomes big next turn. I don't care about taking three. I'll slime bind that at some point if I have to. Especially if he decides he wants to buff it. I'd also like to point out he's sitting on three lands. You got another kill spell, buddy? We 
Yep. Cool. Forest! Oh my god! Oh, be still my beating heart. We got a 3-2 out. Um, yeah, I guess we'll still hold on to the slime bind. Take three one more time before I really start to get bothered by this jerk. That costs double green to adapt. Yeah, I'm gonna do this to him. Because honestly, I don't care about that dude. I'll have to I'll swing into him so hard that he can't block. Oh my god, seriously. We cannot draw our double green. I really want to actually get some value out of this, but we'll play this. Now that he's used Mortify. Since we're not blocking next turn, we'll attack for two and see if he blocks with the kitty. Maybe he has a plus four, plus four, or plus, yeah, it's got to be at least plus four to kill my guy. Unless it was just going to die anyway. It's a 2-2, two -two, buddy. I mean, you know, it's pretty easy. Okay. There you go. He's got all the removal in the world, ladies and gentlemen. And on three lands, he does all this shit. Yep, we're just going to play her adapter up. This fucking guy has every fucking removal spell you can draw. Every single one of them. Alright, so we're just gonna keep playing out dudes. I mean, seriously, what else are we gonna do? He can't possibly removal spell them all. Gotta block. He's going to kill both of our guys. We'll take two, and we have to be able to kill his other dude next turn. Or block his other dude at least. Okay. So what the fuck do you play against mono removal spells? Um, Flyers? About the best I can come up with there. Um, Maybe one quench... See that Sentinel's mark there at the end? I told you that was a decent card. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know. Do you run a quench over something up here? No. I mean, I we're honestly just not set to do anything against removal except play more creatures and more creatures and more. And never let it stop. That is an obnoxious deck. He did all that with three lands. I cannot imagine what that shit's going to do when it starts to actually play a bunch of stuff. <laughs> well, we're going to play the guy or engineer, but it ain't going to survive. It's going to eat a removal spell early. Oh my god, seriously? <laughs> Fucking A. Oh uh, gosh, sure. Sure, why not? Play the Guild Mage. Can't block, so I mean. Really? You're not going to attack? That seems kind of silly. Yeah, we're going to use that as a combat trick, I'd say. Is this when it attacks? Oh, when it dies. Okay. That's what the difference was. Got it. I think we'll actually hold on to that. There's no reason to do that now. No, I don't want to play him into just certain death. We'll pass. I just, it feels like a waste to use the fairy duelist on that guy. 
Okay. Of course they've got him all the time. <laughs> I'll do that now. Love to have drawn a land there. Hell with it. Can't just be scared of it all day. We'll take one to the face. Now we have to draw lands in order to do anything. But now we can play our Geyer Engineer. Just, oh, sack a creature? Yeah, I think uh, he's done his job already. He wasn't going to get any better. Alright, we drew a land. It's a good enough land to draw at this time, or, or at this stage, too. Okay. Block an additional creature. Not worried about that at all. Yeah. Yeah, we'll keep the hell out of that. I like him. Cannot play him yet, can we? No, didn't think so. Um, no attacks. Okay. All right. Take three. No blocks. I think we'll play this guy first. We'll go ahead and adapt him on up, and then next turn we'll be flying in for eight. Unless he dies. Which is not unheard of. Okay. Woo! No. Stop tapping horribly. I guess it doesn't matter, really. We'll play them all beforehand. I don't care. <laughs> when he doesn't draw six removal spells, I guess it goes a little bit better. Okay. Whew. I was really expecting him to just go on the kill anything that hits the damn board plan again. Maybe Regenesis isn't a bad idea instead of the Skyguard. But god, that's so slow for our creatures because they are not fast. Ugh. I actually think I'm going to put in a Gift of Strength over the Skyguard. Although that Skyguard really is very good against what they do. Maybe a Sentinel's Mark over something. What's just too slow to run multiples of? Sentinel Griffin was good that game. I really liked that. Two slime binds is good against this death touch bullshittery. Maybe ascendancy is just too slow. I don't know. We haven't had a chance to fucking use it yet. I like that card. Nice tempo play against him. Maybe the courier. We'll take out a courier. I think a 1 4 is less exciting than making something ridiculously strong to kill his thing or to give us lifelink. We may not be able to cast it early on, but it'll be there if we need it. We do still have the two guild gates. Choosing which we'll play first. I bet he does. Okay. This is fine. He went to six. Guild gate, we have our colors. Hooray. Resolute Walchy Dog. It's fine. Let's go ahead and get some power on the board. Incubation Druid is less important right now because I have no way of just putting a cheap 1 1 counter on him. Well. Eh, no attacks. 
Let's play the courier. I was going to attack into it, but there's a good chance he's got a combat trick, and it's just a waste of a guy at that point. I won't even threaten to kill the dog, and I have no combat tricks of my own to pretend. Okay, we're going to say probably goodbye to Shark to Crab, because he's so damn good. But he might be scared of the Incubation Druid, which is not unheard of. Okay, no surprise, Shark to Crab is very good. So we're going to play another Guild Mage and attack for one. Alright. He's very good, but I would still love to draw some lands. So we're going to play this. So I can make sure I have mana next turn. Or eat a removal spell. Actually, if I draw a land next turn, I might just adapt him. Okay. This is going to start pinging me every turn, and he's going to start gaining a life a turn, which is going to negate all the damage he does. That's not enough to kill anything, so... Go figure. We didn't draw a land. Oh, I could have played the eel. That would have been a good play. We'll hold open the fairy duelist in case he tries to do something stupid. Might as well attack for one. Not no reason to just... I mean, there's, there's no reason to just let him keep gaining life even though that's negating it. land you control. So it's only blue and green at this point. That sucks. Pass to attackers. Pass to end the combat. My turn. Okay. So now we adapt, I think. Do we just play the eel and make him big? We're going to play this guy. Make him big next turn. Then attack again. We gotta go wide, assuming he doesn't have Kaya's Wrath. It's not impossible. I drafted a couple rares myself. Okay. You have a giant. He is indeed giant. Alright. So now, we can adapt him. Adapt him. I still don't think we can swing for five yet. I'll just keep getting in there for one for now. Next turn, we can't play the Sky Guard because we don't have a white mana. <laughs> this might actually have not been a good idea to try and keep that in there, but... Well, we have all the mana in the world. We can't even kill the giant if he goes to block. That sucks. However, we can do that. I think that might actually be an okay trick depending on what he blocks with. You can actually do it twice and make him a 7-7. Seven, seven. Or from target creature move it from him to him. Gonna kill him in response? Wouldn't doubt it. Cool. Lady Engineer. Pass. Open, keeping Fairy Duelist in here just in case he decides he wants to do something. What we really want to do right now, I think, is to distribute some of our 1-1 counters and then draw the guy that makes them all fly. Because this guy is just afraid. Alright, well that's a good start. Adapt him for four, up to four, yeah. 
Okay. Get in there, big boy. All right, next to combat. Now we're going to send in the big boys. You can't kill them both. All right. Gonna kill it in response. All right. So we took out the watchdog. Take five. In the turn. It resolves. We can still flash in Fairy Duelist with this guy. In case he decides to go on the attack. Nope. Exile target creature with power 4 or greater. Well, let's do this. Move a 1-1 one, one counter back from him over to this guy. This guy. Wait, no. Cancel that. Move a 1-1 one, one counter from him to him. I'm leaving myself open for attack, but I don't think he's going to attack in, because he knows I've got a bunch more power than he does. Okay, didn't think so. Woof. Now we're going to get that super damn late. What do you know? Uh, no. You dumbass game. Tap for frickin' white. You're still not tapping that dude. Three, four, five, six... Cast him. Jesus Christ. Can I adapt for? I can. No, I can't. Next to attackers. He's got one, two, three power on board. Done. Still hoping, old, uh, still holding up Fairy Duelist. I think Simic Ascendancy might just not be good for this sort of thing. I, I like what it can do, but it might just be too slow for what we're trying to do. All creatures get minus two, minus two. So. We can save our guild mages, or one of our guild mages. That works. Mmm. Did I order the damage correct on that? I don't know if I did. No, I didn't. Oh well. And we'll play Simic Ascendancy, Hold Open Fairy Duelist. Because for three mana, we can just start putting counters on our big guys. Okay, gain two life for zero gates. That's fine. Cool. You got it, man. Pass. Do I flash him in now just to get in more damage? Nah. Okay. Luck Donnan saw the writing on the walls. We are 2-0. and oh. Hmm. But it is not perfect. Oh, that's right. We got our free reward. And hooray, Cacophodon. Okay, don't care. Untap target permanent. Wait a minute. There's got to be some combo with that, right? All right. So we're going to call it here. I'm going to continue it on to a second video. This has already been an hour. It's going really well. Since we got a pack reward, let's crack it. All right. Two so far.
and Roxmati Re Reveler. I think this card is going to see some play. Actually, probably going to see a lot of play. If, if the, the deck that I think is going to be around, maybe not as a four of, but at least as a two of, this could replace technically uh, Experimental Frenzy, but maybe not because it's a little... I don't know. I, I actually... I think I like this better than Experimental Frenzy in those decks because when they're playing it, they basically don't want their hand anyway. So, and Plus, it's a 2-2 instead of an enchantment. Plus, when you draw a card, it's not wrecking you. So maybe, maybe as multiples. So I think it'll be good. But that's enough commentary from me. We are doing pretty well in the draft so far. Hopefully we can continue. But for now, I'm taking a break. I hope you all enjoyed watching. We will continue soon. Bye-bye.